Hello everyone and thank you all for joining me on this uh, next series that we're going to start here. We're going to go through and talk about um, the Automation Direct Productivity um, Suite programming software and some of the features that it has as well as um, creating basic programs uh, and using some of their features they have within the software. Um, I'll go ahead and create a new playlist with all the videos in there so you can just kind of follow along and go through it. Um, at this point where I'm starting here is I've already installed the software from Automation Direct's website and all you need to do because it's free offered free from Automation Direct is to go to their website um, create an account with them or give them your email address and then go ahead and, and download and install it on your computer um, I'm using 3.9.0 version um, I'm sure there's probably a newer edition out there um, most of the, the stuff's probably going to be very basic and similar. Um, they might have a few new features here and there that they've, they've been adding, as well as like debug fixes, as well as maybe like some security features um, on the, the back end towards like a, a cybersecurity kind of thought process. As well as they've been doing a lot with the motion control, so they may have added some motion control features that, that I may not have. And, and if those are noticed later on down the road, then I'll go ahead and update that, and I will let you know of those updates. But for now, for the most part, 3.9 is going to give us kind of a standard of what, what they're going ahead and using, too. So when you first open the software from whether a desktop icon or into your Windows access uh, key, if you will, um, you're going to end up having this, this screen right here appear. And it's going to ask you whether you want to start a new project, open an existing, or read the project out from the CPU. Well, I don't have a CPU connected right now, so we can't pull from there. But um, And then I also don't have an existing project that I want to use at the moment. So we're going to go ahead and start a brand new project. And so we just go ahead and click Start New Project. And then it's going to open up this Choose CPU um, thing. Now, if we want to close all this out and resize our window, we could go ahead and do that. Or we could go ahead and create our, our new... Um, CPU and for the the remainder of this video that's kind of what we're going to talk about is the different CPUs as well as um, some of the chassis and stuff like that so automation direct offers um, three different types or sizes of the the product se productivity series um, PLCs so they offer the p1 the p2 and the p3 now if you're like me and your programming environment um, of, of choice or of most knowledge is going to be um, Allen Bradley or Rockwell um, software, particularly Studio 5000. Um, just to give you kind of a comparison of understanding the hardware and the software, the P1 is going to be equivalent to using the Connected Components Workbench software for the little micros that Rockwell um, came to market with here, I don't know, about five, ten years ago um, to replace the micro logics. The next step is going to be the P2, and the P2 is going to be equivalent to what most of us would consider as the compact logics um, processor, where you have the main processor and then you can build off of it. Now, the P1 also offers you that same feature, but think about it this way. The micro is the same feature. We can build onto the micro only slightly, but we do have the option to build onto the micro. The P3, however, is the power horse. It is the work the work dog of the the productivity series system. It's no different than the control logics um, software base as well as um, its chassis based system. So for me personally I like to use the P3 however I will admit there are up applications for these others. Now I'm not knocking, I am not changing the opinion of my stance on the productivity suite system but for the smaller applications, I personally use the Click Series PLCs, and we'll have another series video that will go through some of that stuff, as well as a programming environment for that. I'm not saying that either one is better than the other. I'm just simply saying that in the past, these are the ways I have programmed. So, for all intents and purposes, I'm just going to simply say, if you want to know what these CPUs are, the best way to do it is to take this particular number, type it into the Automation Direct website, and they will display what the P1 540 is, the 550, P2 550, P3 530, 550, and 550E. Now, I will tell you right now is that 
the 550E is the only one that offers you an Ethernet connection on the CPU. Now, that Ethernet connection does have the opportunity to configure it in an IP, but generally speaking, it is not the IP, Ethernet IP that we're thinking of when it comes to Rockwell automation. Can it be used for that communication? Yes. It'll have to go through a messaging type command in a Rockwell PLC. However, this is the Ethernet IP that's the industrial protocol. So it's not the it's not the same IP. I want to emphasize that it's not the same IP that's used in the Rockwell Ethernet IP, but this is still like the Ethernet IP that your computer uses. So we do have the option to use that. Um, there is a lot of uh, productivity series connectability that uses Ethernet connection. So we have, I'm trying to think of like remote I.O. communication modules that Automation Direct offers us that all run off Ethernet. If we want to tie multiple chassis together because we do have the ability to do that very similar to a control logic system using like an ENBT or an EN2T, etc. type of module. Um, we do have those features. So for us in our demonstration for all those purposes we're gonna go ahead and stick with the P3550E. Now the next step we have to decide is what size chassis are we gonna use. Are we gonna use a three slot chassis? We're gonna use a five slot chassis, eight slot chassis, or an eleven slot chassis. So again requires what is your requirement? What do you need? Why do you need it? Etc. Um, one thing that I cannot I cannot stress more than enough to anybody is always 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 give yourself 25% growth. So anytime you design a cabinet, anytime you design a program, anytime you put hardware into something, always allow for 25% growth because you know good and well somebody's going to add something to this machine later on. So when you're designing a chassis, let's say you only need five modules for your project and that's it. You could go with a five slot chassis. However, go with the eight slot chassis gives you an extra 25% growth later on. Yes, you're going to have to put three blank covers in there to cover up the, the back plane slots, but it gives you the growth when you need it later on. So you don't have to go around finding a new chassis, adding the chassis in, or putting in some kind of remote I.O. link. So for all intents and purposes, we're going to go with a five slot chassis just because we really don't need that many, but we're going to go ahead and go with that just for testing purposes. So once you're done with that, you could click continue and you could take you to this page here and it'll go ahead and open up the very first ladder for you and basically create it and do all of that. Um, however, I personally like to go ahead and configure my hardware before I go very far. So to configure my hardware, once I've already hit, go ahead and do this. Or should I have done it on the other way to click the button that would have said go to hardware configuration. I can go to the application tools um, window over here and I can double click on hardware configuration. I can also let's see here and it opened on my other screen here. So I can go ahead and do that. I believe I can also go to setup and I can click on hardware configuration there as well. And all it's going to do is open up this hardware configuration. Now from here it gets a little bit trickier depending on what you're doing so should you need to add a remote base so an extra additional chassis you have the option to go through these other chassis over here and you would just drag and drop them into the remote chassis and it's going to go ahead and ask you what remote group number it is remote slave number etc just click OK if you're satisfied if you're not you have the adjustments that you can make to it um, you don't want it, just click delete. And it's going to ask you if you want to delete it, etc. You want an 11 slot chassis, again, just drag and drop. You can change your remote group number, say 3. Um, the remote slave is based on some of the communications protocols that Automation Directs offers, so you'll have to understand those in order to determine what we need here. And we'll go through that later on in, a, in another video down the road. So I'm not in need personally at this moment to have a remote chassis, but just so you understand, you can go ahead and drag and drop these. Now, I believe there is a limit of 10 of these, or excuse me, 8 of these remote chassis, but I'm not 100% certain that maybe things haven't changed or um, other options have appeared throughout the programming software. So 
don't take me for sure on that so um, definitely consult the instruction manual if you're doing more than than three or four remote based um, chassis should you have some type of drive you could go in and add the GS drives to your your system now GS drives understand are again they're a type of uh, or automation direct um, drive that's available that has a communications feature that automatically will link into this Protos X now Protos X is the um, remote IO that I was kind of briefly mentioning before um, that's one of the the features that I really like about um, the automation direct productivity series is they do offer you kind of a remote IO um, the best way I could compare this to again for those that are Rockwell um, programmers um, this would be compared to uh, the very similar stuff as the point IO system so like a 1734 AENT controller with the, the point IO modules afterwards Ethernet IP so again we can add our generic Ethernet IP communications uh, hub in a sense here uh, you can add a CPOE device um, ProNet, which again is kind of more of an automation direct side of things. If you wanted to add a custom email account, so should you be able to connect to the internet with your particular controller and you want to send an email out, you can send it to these particular emails or you can create a custom email account. When you are ready to add um, any type of IO module, you will double click into the base chassis that you are looking for and then you will be given all of the particular modules that are available for the productivity 3000 series um, software or hardware that automation direct offers us if you needed to back out of this and go to the next another one of your things and you wanted to look at it from an overview you can click this back arrow and it'll take you back if we had a base another remote base and we wanted to change say the main base we could go ahead and do that and then we would still have to go back to the overview in order to double click into the other um, view that concludes everything for this um, this has been adding kind of our our uh, chassis to the pro project as well as adding the controller module that we wanted to use um, in our next video, we'll go through how to add the modules and uh, the very basics of beginning of tag structure a little bit. And then we'll talk a little bit about um, potentially changing the, na the, the names of the tags um, for our usage. So thank you all for watching and stay tuned in the next video.